In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get random numbers that exist within a specific range rather than just the default zero to one range for object info random in Blender. So here we're in the shading menu and we're looking at our material nodes. I have a bunch of cubes here with the same material and that a random number is going into the factor of color ramp. The color ramp goes from zero to one. So if I undo this, and you can see the factor down here is 0.5. So that means it's a middle gray. If I change the factor to zero, it's all black. If I change it to one, it's all white. What if I wanted it to be a different range than just zero to one? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So first I'm gonna delete this color ramp and delete this object info. That way we will do everything so you can make this whole node system yourself. First, let's press Shift A, search for color ramp, and we'll place that right here. Then we'll press Shift A, and we'll search for object info. We'll place that here. Then we're gonna press Shift A, and we're gonna search for value. We'll place one value here. While that's selected, I'll press Shift D to duplicate this value node. This first value node, I'm going to rename and I'm gonna call it upper value. The second one, I'm gonna right click, rename, and I'm gonna call it lower value. So now I have these two values and for the upper value, I'm gonna say 0.5 and then the lower value, I'm gonna say 0.1. Next, we need some math nodes. So I'm going to press Shift A, search, math. And I'm gonna put this first math node here. Then I'm gonna select it and press Shift D to duplicate it, and then Shift D to duplicate it one more time. I'm gonna select all of these, and then I'm just gonna move them over a little bit so I have more space. This first math node, we wanna change from add to subtract. And what we're going to subtract is the lower value from the upper value. So we can place the upper value here, and then the lower value here. Next, we'll change the second math node to multiply. And we wanna multiply the output of the subtraction, so we'll plug that in here, by the random number. So now we're multiplying the random number by a value in our range, actually the difference. But now we're missing part of that range, so we need to add in the lower value again. We'll take this output, plug it into this math node, and then add the lower value. Then finally, we'll take this value, plug it into factor of the color ramp, and then we'll take the color ramp color out and right into the base color. And as you can see, now we neither have 100% black nor 100% white. That's because our range is 0.1 to 0.5 and a random number in between. If I were to change this to zero, suddenly now I have a random value between zero and 0.5, with the opportunity to be potentially closer to zero. If I change this to 0.7, and I change this one to 0.5, we'll be in that strange gray zone. So you can see that we are changing the range of our random numbers. And we're not limited to between one and zero. I could have these upper values be you know, 45, and then I can have this lower value be 21, but for the particular color ramp we're using, that means we're all the way up on the factor. So for this, this input, that doesn't work, but there's plenty of values where you would want a range of a higher number and you can use it just like this. So I'm gonna change this back down to 0.5 and I'm gonna change this one back down to 0.1 and to really show you that it's definitely within that range, I'm gonna add another point on the color ramp and then I'm gonna change this white color to something like a bright red so we can't miss it. And notice it's nowhere to be found. Now, if I change my values, so my lower value would be 0.5 and then I make my upper value something like 0.8. Notice now we're using this range. So we're only getting random values in this part of the color ramp. So this is a really great trick using just a little bit of math and the modulus function to get 
a random number within a certain range when you're starting with a random number between 0 and 1 trying to make materials in Blender. You can also go ahead and then group these nodes together and then they will work for what you're doing. So there's many ways to do that. I could shift click all of these, right click and then group. And then when I go back up in the nodes, I can have this node group right here and I could rename it random range. And then I have all my input values right here labeled. So I could continue to reuse this node and remember these values right here and they're very easy to change. So I could just duplicate this anytime I need to use it again for a different random value within a certain range when I'm working in Blender. Happy 3D modeling.